What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Rihanna Fly. We do every single thing outdoors. As you guys can tell, I am in a ice shanty. We are up here in kind of central Wisconsin with some good dudes. I think they're over there in that shanty. This is kind of the cooking shanty. We got the grill getting ready to fire up. Peter. So it's about noon, what you guys are seeing right now, and the reason I'm starting to film at noon is because all the footage that I had previously filmed on my GoPro is on the bottom of the lake, 20 feet deep. Uh, yeah, so, lost the GoPro today, my main GoPro that I use to film all of my videos. Percent by mistake, I had it on a clip that was kind of clipped on something like this. It got bumped and down goes the GoPro perfectly in the ice hole all the way down to the bottom. Couldn't do nothing about it. It was almost too late to reach in there and grab it. The GoPro can be replaced. I'm just glad it wasn't my phone or wallet or car keys or anything major. So to kind of keep you, to kind of catch you guys up with what you missed in the morning, um, drove out on the ice on the truck, uh, 14 inches of ice. Bite's been pretty slow, caught two crappie, or sauce caught two crappie, and uh, we're kind of taking a little break. Um, I'm in the cooking tent, going to fire up some, going to make some deer burgers, and uh, hopefully the afternoon bite picks up and we get some crappies, and it's going to be a good day, so stay tuned. All right, so obviously I am now home in my garage. Uh, the bite up in Wisconsin was super slow. I think we caught, between the four of us, we caught 12 crappie in almost 12 hours, so it was slow. It was a long day, but it was also a fun day. Uh, definitely a whole new experience to me with driving on the ice and basically staying in one place for all day. I'm used to fishing these farm ponds and kind of hole hopping and uh, just basically chasing after the fish. But with it being so cold and the long process of tearing everything down and putting everything back up, we decided to stay put right where we were at and hope that the fish be cruising around. For the GoPro situation, I uh, texted Taylor, I told her the news, I dropped my GoPro, and uh, I come home the next day, which happens to be Valentine's Day, and she surprised me with a brand new GoPro 8, which I am filming on right now, so that was pretty awesome, I was not expecting that. That's why she's the best wife in the whole entire world. So with there not being much of a uh, fishing video, from this from this weekend i decided to kind of go over my gear i've had a handful of people ask ask what my gear setup was so i figured uh why not now so i like to be mobile so everything is in a sled uh everything has a purpose in this sled the first thing is my yeti bucket people talk trash about the yeti bucket but i love it uh, keeps everything nice and dry sealed tight you can also sit on it Got pockets for everything. I keep my coffee cup in this one. You can put tools, uh, your jig box, whatever in there. Pop it open. My uh, collection has been depleted since the beginning of the season just from letting people borrow some or losing them or snagging, but I use all tungsten. Just a lot better than lead. It sinks quicker. Just an assortment of plastics in here. Extra auger blade. Got some spoons in there, which I'm lost a lot of spoons this year. More plastics, extra line. Gotta have some snackage, y'all. You get hungry on the ice. And then some ice spikes. Open up this bad boy. And these are usually where I keep all of my uh, warm gear. So I got like my neck gaiter, hand muff, and some hand warmers. Also put extra gloves, food, drinks, whatever in here. So yeah, Yeti Bucket is definitely a game changer for ice fishing. I've also had like some uh, rod rod holders that can clamp on here. It's like a sound of bucket, rod holder on each side, and uh, hands free basically. Every ice fisherman needs a heater. You gotta stay warm, y'all. It gets frigid out there. Staying warm and comfortable can be a game changer and it can be the difference between calling it quits or staying out all day. And also they make attachments that you can attach like right here, it's like a stainless steel uh, tray that you can cook food. Uh, Sauce actually has one, used it, it was freaking sweet. Got my Arctic cooler. I think there's stuff in here from last weekend, so. Buns, extra waters, 
Uh, this is usually filled with uh, adult beverages. I also have my jet boil in here. And uh, if you guys watched my videos earlier from deer season, I use this jet boil for everything, making hot coffee, hot food. And then here is the cooker, camp cooker. I don't usually take this with me on every trip. Uh, if I plan on being out for a couple hours, I'll take this. Cook up for breakfast, lunch, and this bad boy. This is a, uh, I use this for a couple different reasons. I'll throw this on the ground, kneel on, kneel on it, said kneel on the ice, saves your knees. And it's also a flotation device. So God forbid if anything happens, you can throw it out and help save someone or yourself. Um, I don't have ice bibs, what I wear. Are my duck hunting waders. These are banded breathables. Super comfortable, warm. Keep drying the ice with some ice spikes so you're not slipping and falling and busting your booty on the ice. Coming to the rot and reel selection. So I just have a basic affordable fray bill combo. This is a uh, 24 inch ultralight. This is more like my panfish noodle. Just something kind of throw around. Put a little tungsten jig on, a little waxy. Let it do its thing. Uh, this is my spoon rod. It's a 13 thermo ice. 26 inch medium light. This has a little more backbone. Can handle more bigger lures, bigger fish. I dig it. And then for, for my bread and butter. This is my boo right here. This is a 13 black Betty on an ACC crappie stick. 30 inch. I use it. This is my go-to. I use this for... All my fishing as you can see i got a tungsten with a little plastic on there but uh i love this well worth the money this thing's caught a lot of fish this year my little bubbler so when i got my middle bucket which is somewhere around here takes a couple of double batteries keep your minnows alive keep the water from freezing up for my auger i have a uh strike master six inch mora and i also have the clam attachment with the Milwaukee drill but I also have the manual in case the battery, or in case the battery goes dead, or for some reason the drill malfunctions. So I got auger options. I also keep just a random bunch of tools here. I got a screwdriver and some pliers to kind of do any fixes that needs to be done on any of my fishing gear on the jet sled. Take it out to your spot, easy enough. Uh, the only thing that I am missing is a Vexlar or any type of flasher, which I hadn't really used a flasher in the years past because all the lakes I fish around here, I know the depths, I know where the fish are. So I really need the flasher, but I think if I wanna start fishing new waters, like up in Wisconsin, uh, I think I'm gonna get a uh, Vexlar FL8. So yeah, that's basically a rundown of all the gear that I use during the ice fishing session. Of course, I wear all my first light gear. Stay nice and warm. So yeah, definitely not the video that I was expecting to be making while going up to Wisconsin, but like I said earlier, I'm glad that I lost the GoPro and not like my phone, wallet, or the keys. And uh, now that Ann Taylor hooked me up with a new GoPro. So it was definitely a different experience going to Wisconsin, fishing these big waters, pressured fish. Uh, kind of gave me a little slice of humble pie. I'm used to fishing down here with all the farm ponds and basically catching fish every time I go out. But it's still fun, and I will definitely be back, if not this season, next season for sure. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video of Read on the Fly. There's a couple more weeks of ice fishing left, so hopefully we got a couple more videos coming your way. Don't forget to hit that like button, drop a comment down below, hit that subscribe button. Until next time, see ya.